Creating a pictograph involves a number of steps. Let's find out how to create a pictograph. Step 1. Collect data. You can collect data by researching, by counting or measuring something, or by collecting answers to a survey question. Holly and her family took part in the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. Holly collected data by using a tally to keep track of what she collected. She added up her tallies to find the totals for each category. Let's move to steps 2 and 3 for creating a pictograph. We will keep the data handy. So step 2 is to decide if your pictograph will be horizontal or vertical. Let's start with a horizontal pictograph. Step 3 is to write the title and create a key. Use a simple picture symbol that relates to the topic and think carefully about the scale. Holly chose a simple title that tells what the pictograph is about. What I picked up in the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. Holly chose a simple trash bag that she could very easily draw for her key. Her scale needs to be chosen carefully. Holly has to think carefully about her numbers to decide what each trash bag will represent. Holly's largest number is 25, so her scale can use a fairly small number. If she had higher numbers like 80 or 100 or even more, she'd probably want each trash bag to represent 4 or 10 or even 20 items. But with her small numbers, if each trash bag represented 10 items, it would be really hard to show numbers like 8 and 12. Holly decided she should choose a scale of 2. If she uses 2, she needs to draw 12 and a half trash bags for her largest number, 25. But it will make her data really clear. She writes her scale in her key. Now let's look at step 4. Prepare a chart with columns and labels. For a horizontal pictograph, two columns are needed. A smaller one on the left for the category labels and a larger one for the symbols. Holly had six categories, so her chart needs to be six lines long, but she's going to leave a space between each category, so she doubles six and uses 12 lines. She adds her labels to complete step four, and now she is ready for step five. Put in the data. Since Holly packed up 10 plastic bottles, she adds five trash bags. Each trash bag is worth two, so they count up by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Since Holly picked up eight food wrappers, she adds four trash bags. For 12 plastic bags, she represents using six symbols. Holly picked up 22 straws, so she adds 11 trash bags for that. 25 cigarette butts is trickier. It's an odd number. 12 bags will show 24 cigarette butts. But how will she show one more item? She needs to add half a symbol to show one more item, because half of two is one. Since Holly picked up 14 items in the other category, she adds seven trash bags. Now all of the steps are done. If Holly had chosen a vertical pictograph, she would still show the same information, but she would need to know how much space to leave for her data. Steps 1, 2, and 3 are the same. Step 4, prepare a chart with columns and labels, is a little bit different. For a vertical pictograph, one column is needed for each category, and we need to know how many lines the largest category will need. Holly has six categories, so her chart needs to have six columns. Her largest number of items is 25 cigarette butts. She needs 12 and a half trash bags, which will need 13 lines. She counts down 13 lines to draw a line where her pictograph symbols will start. She draws lines to create six columns that are evenly spaced. She adds the category labels, and then she is ready for step five, put in the data. Since the same scale is used, the number of trash bags is the same as the horizontal pictograph. Each trash bag represents two items of trash. They're drawn starting from the bottom so they get taller to show more items. No matter which way you create your pictograph, horizontal or vertical, they always include the title of the graph, the categories clearly labeled, the key with the scale, and the data. Now you can have fun creating pictographs too. Thanks for watching.